Hey guys, this is Poet Spice and I am here to do a video for the Mystical Lands in May hosted by my coloring corner by Renee. And so I am going to be using this book, The Mystical Lands of Kalinandra. I think I said that correct. And we are in support of Karen E. Myers. So there is a list of people who have gone for the last two weeks and we are coloring in these coloring books. There will be a giveaway, so definitely stay around for that. And I will be over in the side in the um, comments uh, during the premiere. So hopefully I will not be sitting here boring you to death and you'll find it interesting. I kind of had to do this as a speed color because I did it once and well, it would not load. So here we are trying for a second time. So here is this book and we are going to go ahead and get started. Here's just a little flip through of some of the pages. It gives you information about the author and a little story that she tells at the beginning. And then of course you have your images. So I decided that I was going to go do this image because it reminded me of like a strawberry house. So I'm going ahead and putting a piece of paper beneath there so that the alcohol markers won't bleed through. If you've been on my channel before, you know that alcohol markers are my favorite. I love using them. And so that's what we are going to do. I have a bunch of alcohol markers. So I've got Spectrum Noirs, Ahuhus, Nuvos, all kinds of them. Uh, Sprees, Aspires. And so we're gonna see a bunch of those. Now I was looking at this image and it reminded me of a strawberry. I don't know. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start with this lighter RB1 color and we are going to create this strawberry looking type of house in the middle of nowhere. It does say Summervale, even though it does have a little bit of a, kind of a fall vibe going on. But yeah, that's what we're gonna go with. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cover over everything. It won't matter because we'll go back with other colors and darken it in. So give it some dimension that way. And we can just go ahead and do that. It won't matter how, you know, you don't have to get totally close to the edge of the lines because alcohol markers bleed. And this is just part of what they are. Um, that it's not a deficiency, it's just the way they work. So on pretty much any paper, unless it's uber thick, it will bleed through. So you use that to your advantage and yeah, you just go with it. So here I am doing some of the leaves and I decided yeah I guess it's not going to be you know realistic <laughs> oh, but then again I mean it's not a realistic book now is it mushrooms with faces and so forth nah okay so now I've taken a second color so this is an RB2 no an MG2 and we're just going around and darkening up the edges wherever we want it darker and you'll notice we're using, a, we're not covering as much as we did for previously. And you just do the same thing with the next layer. So when I go to the M, I forgot what the letters were, but when I go to the next darker color, you cover even less. And then you can go back and forth between the colors.
Okay, so I'm gonna go to the next color on green and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I start with my lighter color and then I will go ahead and go to the other ones. I was showing you there how I typically, even though I have swatches for my markers, I also do a little dot or a slice beside on the scrap piece of paper so that I can see that, yep, this is the color I want. No, it's not. So that it will blend with what I want it to do. Here, notice there are some places where I didn't get to the line totally. Um, and so there's some white showing. It won't matter because when you go back over it with your other colors, it will go ahead and fill in because alcohol markers bleed. Now, here I'm showing you that there was some color in the green and to push it out you can just use um you could use a blender to get rid of it or you can just use the color you're using and hold it there and it'll push part of the marker color out into the other side so you won't have to worry about that okay now i'm just going ahead and do the same thing with the leaves and I believe in turning your page in order to make it work for you and not to struggle. So you can see here I'm not too worried about going outside of the lines or filling it in perfectly. Because once again, when you go over it with your second color, your third color, it'll start pushing some of the alcohol marker to the edges anyway. Because it works so it's just a way to make it work for you and not against Okay, so I've taken the green and then I'm just bringing it down into the bottom, adding some to the grass. And I'm not worried about going like each blade and each little piece, just kind of dotting in, in um, dotting it around where I need it and flicking it where I need it. And then I'm going back up here in the stem to work on that in darken areas there. It's really just a process of going back and forth between your lights and your darks. And then, of course, you can go back with any kind of, like, white gel pen or anything like that on top of your marker. But typically, I don't do much of that. Um, sometimes I will save, like, a highlight space simply by not coloring all of the white space. or not coloring a white space, and then when I go back over it, go back over it with a much lighter color.
Here I've used some of those orange markers to fill in the little berries. And this is where you can make the bleed through work for you. Instead of trying to color each little teeny tiny berry with little strokes, if you just put the marker down and let it fill in or dot like I'm doing here, it will fill in the area for you. And you don't have to try to quote unquote color in each little tiny piece. And then the same when you go back with the highlight color or dark color. So here I've pulled out some of those Spectrum Noir Coloristas. That was a special release they had um, several years ago. And it was like an auto ship. And basically they have two bullet tips of different sizes. And basically that's how you can tell the difference between Spectrum Noir markers is their barrel color. Okay, so my page was feeling unbalanced and I wanted to go back and add some of this pink down here to this other flower, or actually leaf, so that it kind of balances. So it has three areas with that color. And then I started with the darker one and I meant to start with the lightest color. So I will show you something here. So instead of trying to get a darker red, I'm going to use this gray and so what that gray will do is it'll darken the red and yet I don't have a quote unquote darker red that I'm using so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing around here so darken all these areas that I wanted to be extra dark even though I did use a darker red so this would be like the fourth color and you can do the same technique with pretty much any color and you can vary if you're using a darker gray or a warmer gray and so forth. So now we're going to try to figure out what to do with this. Because I want to do the branch area before I fill in the rest of the grass. So that way I can tell how dark I want to go or how light.
Okay, so I've done the same concept here. I've done a light brown, a medium brown, and now I'm doing the darker brown. And I am not actually, quote unquote, coloring each line. I'm kind of doing a dabbing and a dash to get in kind of more texture along with getting in a darker color. So that's something else you can do. You don't have to sit there and color every single line with your pencil or whatever it is you're using, really, but... So by doing the kind of dabbing and dashing method, you get more texture and you get more of a gradient, even though I've just used three colors. It makes it fabulous. So fun. Hopefully you guys aren't bored. I <laughs> had more commentary in my other video, but like I said, it wasn't loading fast enough. So we kind of had to go with adjusting.
So here I've taken a lighter green um, that's a different shade. It's, it's much brighter than the olives and so forth. But I'm going to have it do that because number one, it'll brighten up the picture a little bit. And I'm just kind of scumbling, dotting into the background um, and leaving some white space so that will become highlights. So that's like I was saying before. You can leave some of the white of the page to become highlights. And then I'm going around various areas around the picture in this brighter green. And you'll notice it brightens it up. But at the same time, it's like, hmm, that green's kind of different from the other ones. So I am going to go back now with a lighter gray and go over some of the areas, which will dull down the bright green some, but not too much. And then see here, what I'm doing is going over it and pulling the greens together and into the white space. So now I am dragging color from one area to another, and it makes for brighter patches down in the green as well, in the front of the yard. So that's pretty cool. So instead of having these solid pieces of green, I'm using the gray to mix them and drag them into areas that were not quote unquote colored. And then it looks like it was colored, but you've got highlights. So fabulous. So now I've pulled some of that brown and stuff down into the sidewalk. And now I want to make the stones. So first off, I'm adding some more brown here to like darken some of the areas. Get some of that dirt. And then put some more brown into the green because it'll look like different pieces of the dirt have gone farther. And then... The stairs, they look like wood planks, but I'm going to make the stairs and the wall stone. And so I want to do with like a kind of marbling effect. And I'm going to use this light gray, which is like funny because it comes out a peachy color. As the base. And then I'll go over with other variations of gray, and then it'll get that kind of like darkish, marbly, um kind of look with like a pinkish undertone all right so here's where we're going to have our giveaway so let's do it quick 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 put in the comments a number between one and a hundred and don't repeat make sure you don't repeat the numbers and whoever is closest to the number without going over will win I believe it's a PDF of one of these books, and you'll have to contact Renee. The information will be in the description box below. So go ahead and get that number in there. Be quick, 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 quick. Because once we get done with these stones, then we're going to continue with who is our winner. So over in the comments, 1 to 100. Don't repeat numbers. And then the person who is closest to that number without going over will be the winner and so definitely you'll contact Renee with the information below 
and receive your prize. I believe it's a PDF, but if I'm wrong, don't blame Renee. It's me because I can't remember. It's really early in the morning. Okay, so I'm just going back to scumble through these bricks and stones to try to get them to look the way I want them to. Okay. And so I'm just adding these so that it will turn into that kind of like stone look, but you have different pieces when you go by. That made no sense, but you know what I mean. Okay, there's only a couple more seconds to go ahead and put in your 1 through 100 number to see who's going to be the winner of the prize for this. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> Alright, go ahead and get those last little ones in and we will be picking the winner here soon so stop and wait for that little dial to figure out who's the winner Okay, so I went and found a number generator. So we've got a minimum of one and a maximum of 100. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the number and uh, the person who either has that number or is closest to the number without going over will be the winner, okay? So if I do a number 75 and the closest person is uh, an 80, or a 72 it'll be the worst who's the 72 so you either are the winner if you have the exact number or the closest to the number without going over okay are we all ready i'm going to give this a spin spin so you can all see who's winning because i don't have one of those bot thing type of things <laughs> so it's number 38 so whoever is number 38 or is closest to that number without 
going over is my winner. And then we will go over into the chat and see who that is. And then we will let you know exactly who it is in a moment. So whoever is number 38 or is closest to without going over. Woohoo! All right, so we're just gonna push done. I'm gonna flip you right back on over to my, okay, see what I said about my, my lovely coloring thing, yeah. <laughs> that's not even all, that's just a, that's just a portion of what's in front of me. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. It is terrible. <laughs> but what can we say? What can we say? Hey, right? Mm, can't say much. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to do on here is I'm going to do some kind of background for you. And then we will be done. And I will thank you for showing up and supporting. And definitely go check out the Karen uh, books, the Karen Meyer books, and go check out everybody whose channel who's participating and so forth and so on. It'll be fabulous and lovely. Everybody will appreciate it. I know they will. They will, they will, they will. So let's see. I'm trying to decide do I want to go with markers or do I want to go with ink? And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and show you how I just go ahead and do with markers. So let me see which color I'm going to use real quick. And then, ooh, that's darker than I want. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, let me see. Yeah. It's a little darker. Oh. Well, what about this? Is this darker? What's this? Now, there we go. So now I'm going to use an Ohuhu Maka, and I'm just going to put some color on here. Once again, I'm just going to dab it in areas where it would be dark. So you're going to get some shadows underneath all your little plants because, you know, they would cast a shadow on the sky, and I am not... The only thing I'm trying to do is avoid like weird, like straight lines. So I'm using my chisel tip to go around. And I like this method because it kind of gives you like that impression of that you've got your different colors in your sky or um, as well as, you know, some clouds and different lighting settings. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's too early in the morning, y'all. You know what I mean. You can see it happening. <laughs> you, see, you see it happening, you see. So, yes. So let me go ahead and this over here. And like I said, we will pick whoever the winner is. I'll go over there and be writing it down in the chat comments. What was our number 38? Or Renee, if you're watching and you see who put the closest number to 38, you could type that in. And so this is another quick way to do a sky. And two, it does not matter really if, like here, I'm gonna go right over this, look, I'm going right over this piece that I colored the leaves. Doesn't really matter. It just gives you more depth in different areas and it kind of puts that color in other places. So, when we go outside or we look at anything. Okay, so I'm coloring over here. My hand's cast in a shadow, which I'm sorry if it's casting too much of a shadow. It's just the way I have to set up my camera and, and lights. Okay, so that means the color of my hand is showing up on this, right? It may not be a lot, but it's showing up. And then if you look at closely at your hand, Whatever you are coloring is reflected. You know, there's going to be some colors reflected on my skin. 
They just may not be very prevalent, but they're there. So it just helps. And I'm not going to do an outside one. I'm just going to do this inside. Okay. So now it looks like, and if you wanted to be more deliberate about it, you could. Like you can make your This a little darker and some of this you see is coming from this side but this isn't bleeding into the picture you just see it because it's wet and then if I wanted it a little darker I could do that and everything else so there is my picture and hopefully I didn't keep you too long hopefully you were entertained and maybe that showed you some tips or something and you know, just give you another way of thinking about how you can color your pieces or if you've never used alcohol markers and so forth, then you could do that and so forth. So thank you, Renee, for allowing me to participate. Hopefully this was something you all are interested in and definitely check over here on the side for the person who's winning. And don't forget, you need to contact Renee through her email so that you can pick up your prize, which will be one of these fabulous Karen E. Myers. PD. I want to say it's a PDF. If it's not, please don't. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. But <laughs> it is one of these items, okay? All right, thanks for watching, you guys. And, you know, let me know if this was okay, if you would like me to try a live everything. Bye guys. Thanks for watching. Go check out the other ladies and so forth in the lineup.